Welcome back everyone, it's been a long time, but I got a bottle of beer in the mail from Stone and this is part of their 20th Anniversary Encore series and this is the a rebrew of the Stone 14th Anniversary Imperial IPA. So I reviewed this back when it came out all uh, six years ago and really enjoyed it and they shipped me the rebrew and it was part of this series, the last of their series that they're rebrewing. And I actually remember really liking this beer. I was gonna maybe watch my review of it, but decided not to. 8.9%, 100 IPUs, they say. Hot varieties are UK Target, Bodicea, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and East Kent Goldings, classic EKGs, uh, and a lot of British beer, so. Send me some info on it. Uh, I think the it's all British malt as well, so probably a lot of Maris Otter, and I don't know what yeast they're using, but hey, English yeast and IPAs, that's all the rage these days, right? So let's get this thing open. I don't know. Probably seems about right. I can't even remember what it looked like or what it smelled like, but I remember this one aged really well. I had it on draft and I was actually quite surprised at how well it worked on draft with like six months on it. Very floral, some spice, like an orange marmalade, lemongrass. Yeah, like fr like a fruity, slightly citrusy, a little earthy. Overall, very floral. Picking up maybe a little bit of like a biscuity malt character, but uh, let's give it a try. Cheers. Very soft up front. Bitterness is kind of restrained, but then it kind of comes forward and lingers um, as, as the uh, beer goes down. Yeah, a lot of or orange marmalade character. Floral, um, spicy-like, earthy, kind of hot bitterness to it. And that sweetness is kind of sweet bread, biscuit, toast, toastiness. I kind of wonder if that orange marmalade thing is coming from the yeast. Because there definitely is a fruitiness, and I'm not that familiar with Target or uh, Bodicea, so I'm not sure what they're adding to the mix. Maybe I did back in the day. EKG tend to ends a, adds a little lemon, earthy lemongrass kind of character to it. Um, so I'm kind of picking up on that. But the other two hops, I'm not sure. Still very dry, which is nice. Um, finishes like a, a nice dry West Coast IPA with a bit more bitterness. You can tell it's a double IPA with, with the way it finishes. So yeah, I still really like it. Um, I don't drink a whole lot of double IPAs these days, but this is a pretty good one, different take. Um, which is funny, because back in the day, using English yeast and malt in an IPA, no one was doing that on the west coast at least and then now you have all this New England IPA, Northeast IPA that's now influencing a lot of breweries around here so you're starting to see English yeast strains in hoppy beer so it's uh, it's kind of funny how uh, all these years later the, this is happening and uh, I mean it's a pretty clear beer there's maybe a slight haze to it um, but that might just be a little bit of chill haze so I don't know if they uh, filter this one or didn't filter it as fine as some of their other IPAs which are really bright and clear. This one's just a touch hazy. So it kind of fits with what everyone wants to do these days. So thanks for watching. Um, I have another beer that was sent to me that I need to review and uh, that's about all the reviews you'll see from me are going to be ones that someone sent me the beer from say a brewery or otherwise. So. Wrapping up for a rebrew of Stone 14th Anniversary, recommended checking it out. It's uh, a little different than what Stone's doing these days and has done, and, and different from even a lot of the 
beers that are kind of in the same similar profile these days. So thanks for watching. Until next time, cheers.